Welcome back. This is Nalex training video on combustion analysis. What is combustion? Combustion is burning something in air and specifically oxygen. So if the whatever burns is the oxygen in the air, it's it's essentially a chemical reaction between oxygen and most most obviously probably for this problem would be some kind of a hydrocarbon. Carbon and hydrogen burns. Coal natural gas, gasoline, these are all hydrocarbons, and they burn in air. And they're always gonna give you the same stuff. Okay, so this is something that Alex expects you to know, that you're gonna have some kind of a hydrocarbon. So let's just say uh, carbon and hydrogen. They say that it's possible that you've got some oxygen in there. Uh, that would be awfully mean. Let's, let's pretend like it's not. I don't, I've never seen it. You're, you'll be able to figure it out at the end anyway, but my guess is that you're going to have a hydrocarbon because they are the ones that you're most likely just going to burn. Um, if you had oxygen, you'll end up with an alcohol, and an alcohol also burns. But you've got a hydrocarbon in oxygen. Now, that is something that Alex is not going to tell you. Oxygen is so reactive that it will combine with itself. And so this is one of the diatomic molecules, and so... Free state oxygen is always O2. It's never O. It is always going to give you the same stuff. You're going to get water. That water is going to be in the form of a gas because this explodes, okay? This would be like, you know, a fire on your stove or a fire in your gas fireplace. That's what's going to happen. And you're going to get water vapor plus you're going to get carbon dioxide gas. So you have two greenhouse gases. That's why people are always upset when you burn things, burn fossil fuels, because they're hydrocarbons, okay? So, if you have this, you already start with something, and they kind of told you that you're going to get carbon dioxide, and they even told you how much, and you're going to get some water. They're going to tell you how much. You need to supply this information that it burns in air, and the oxygen is O2. So right now, this is unknown. But I, they do tell me that the carbon dioxide is going to be 13.54 grams and that the water is 2.77 grams. Now, in order to do a balanced equation, I have to go through moles. This is the numbers here, the coefficients are all going to be uh, whole numbers and they're going to represent moles. So, one molecule with one, uh, you know, one atom plus one molecule equals so many molecules and so many molecules, or, or so many formula units, or so many molecules equals so many molecules, or uh, so many dozens equals some, plus so many dozens equals so many dozens, or whatever. So the easiest way to, in chemistry is to go everything through the mole, because a mole is a number, and numbers can compare with other numbers. You can do ratios with numbers. You can't do anything with weights. So you need to go through the, through the molecular mass that you can add all these up from the periodic table and get a total amount of mass that that water molecule weighs, okay? Now, if you're just doing off the top of your head, you would say, okay, this is 16, this is 1, and there's another one, so this is a total of 18. This is 12, this is 16, and 16, so 32 plus 12 problem with Alex is that they won't accept that. So you're going to need to actually go into Alex and uh, into the periodic table and find out what an oxygen is all the way all the decimals and add another H all the decimals plus another H all the decimals. Okay, so that's what I did. I went in and I can't use my number and a lot of times you can simply Google this and let Siri tell you uh, what the molar mass of carbon dioxide is or what the molar mass of oxygen is or high, uh, water. It works almost all the time. But if you're stuck, and certainly if this were a test, you would, you would need to actually go in and add them all up. So carbon dioxide gas is 44.010 grams per mole. Water equals... 18.015 grams per mole, okay? Oxygen, since I know that there's oxygen involved too, um, is 31.9988 grams per mole, okay? 
So I just knew that I needed that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do. So let's find out how many moles this is. How many moles of water am I gonna have? How many moles of, of carbon dioxide am I gonna have? And then we're gonna go backwards and try to find out how many moles of this we have. Because if I know grams, and I know it's molar mass, and I know moles, then I can tell you exactly how, which, uh, which atoms they are and what combination that they're in, okay? All right, so, so much, so much. Let's uh, find out how many moles this is. So let's do water first. 2.77 grams of water, okay? And water, remember, is 18.015 grams per mole. Okay, so I want to get rid of grams, so grams are on the bottom. I'm now in moles, so I have to divide, right? So when I divide this out, I'm going to get 0 0.15376 moles of water. All right, let's do the same thing with carbon dioxide. They gave us 13.54 grams of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide was 44 0 0.010 grams per mole. So we're going to divide this out and we're going to get 0 0.15376. Oops, that's so wrong. I wrote down the wrong number here. Will you please forgive me? When you, multi when you divide these two numbers, I just wrote down it. I just looked on my paper. This is 0.3076. Three zero seven six five. Sorry about that. That will completely mess you up. Moles of water, and this is moles of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to come up here and write this number here. I always put grams and then moles, and now I deal everything in the car in the balanced equation deals with moles. So I'm going to say that the water is point three zero seven six five point. 30765 moles and the carbon dioxide is 0.15376. All right. Can you tell how these two are related? Because remember, a balanced equation is always going to have a whole number. Uh, when you finally have a balanced equation, you're going to have whole numbers with whole numbers with whole numbers and whole numbers. Can you see that this is half of this? This is 30 cents, and this is 15 cents. And if you were divided out, you could see that it was two, that there's gonna be two moles of carbon dioxide for every one mole of water, all right? Now, if all the oxygen comes from here, if we're assuming that, okay, you, and unless it just doesn't work, I'm just gonna assume that this is a hydrocarbon, okay? So, um, and then we'll have to deal with it later, but. I'm just going to assume that all my oxygen is from here. And so what am I really dealing with? I'm dealing with carbon and hydrogen. All right, so let's look at this. This is a two to one relationship. Two moles for every one mole of this, I'm going to have two moles of this. Now, I don't know that this is the number. I'm just saying that whatever the number is, this one's twice this one. All right, now here's the hard part of this question problem. Can you see that I have, uh, I have, there's two of these in one of these. There's two of these in one of these. Oh, I'm so sorry. Get a better teacher. So there's two of these in one of these. So if the relationship is for every one water molecule that's produced, two uh, it takes two carbons to, to be produced for the same amount of moles. If you're going to, if you're, if the number of moles were the same, you would have to have two of these for every one of these. Okay. Now there is there is where you're going to take this and see what do we got. I'm going to just assume it's CH. Now how many C's and how many H's? All right. For every for every one molecule with an H2, I'm going to have two molecules with a C1. All right, well, what's one times two? Two. What's two times one? Two. That means that this is a one-to-one -one relationship. Since it takes two moles for every one of these moles, two moles of carbon dioxide for every mole of water, okay? 
then you're going to then you're going to end up saying that this is a one to one relationship. If this is a one to one relationship, then I simply I'm going to come back to my problem and say how much does this weigh? How much does just CH weigh? Well, I'm going to go back into Schoology and find out what C weighs, okay? C is carbon, and it weighs 12.011 grams per mole. How much does H weigh? Well, H is hydrogen, and it's 1.0079 grams per mole. All right, I'm going to add that up, keep all my decimals, and I have 13.019 grams per mole. Okay, now, what do they tell us? We tell us that we have four grams of it and that its molar mass is 78. All right, well, hmm, all I need to know, all I need to know is its molar mass. I've got grams per mole, okay? I've got, this is grams per mole and my total molecule is 78. Let's see if 13 goes into 78 evenly. All right, so 78 divided by 13.019 equals my calculator. 78 divided by 13.019. I like the number 5.9912. That's six. Okay, that means. If this, if this molecule, which is 13, is the empirical formula, which is just your, with, with just your letters, and this is your molecular mass, then how many 13s go into 78? And you're begging for a whole number, okay? There's ways to finagle it if you don't have it, but I'd love it when it's a whole number because that means this number is simply multiplied by each of these letters. And your answer is C6. H6, and that's the answer to this problem, okay? Very challenging for such a one-sentence kind of problem. It looks amazingly easy until you start doing it, okay? You may have to do a couple of these to make any sense of it, but I wish you well.